interesting. As we get into chance select, we'll see whether we do have any carry top laners. I want to see Zatai, you know, play, you know, maybe even more Riven. Just don't do it into uh, Shen's support and then get counterpicked. But here we are, Azir first ban and Gangplank's going to be the answer. Yeah, HQ after last week, after all of their games, and uh, they did a couple of interviews, and I think it was On who was talking about that they have a much better handle, or they think they do, uh, on the current meta after the first week of groups. Uh, and they have a much clearer idea of what to go for in picks and bans. Here, obviously, targeting that uh, mid lane here. Severely. Uh, banning out Rookie and a couple champions here. And first picking that at least for the jungle. So Kakao doesn't have to play Skarner. <laughs> yeah, massive first pick rate as well for that, Elise. So it makes a little bit of sense there. Still keeping the Kench on the bench is Invictus Gaming, but the standard GP and Mordekaiser red side bans still come through to tie with the Hover of the Ringer. Absolutely. And there's the Fizz too, but. I think it's so smart for AHQ just to target out the mid lane on blue side. Again, Rookie has been the carry force here, so why give him anything that he can really work with? But, you know, the Lulu and the Jinx will be the first base. Lulu takes. is one of the best in the world as well. He's absolutely fantastic on that champion. Yeah, we'll see if the Morgana comes through as well, and they do a full-on uh, Protect Kid the Jug of Jinx. composition here. I don't know if I'd be putting all my eggs <laughs> in the kid basket right now. If you protect it, <laughs> it makes me nervous. So there's two schools of thought, right? If you have a weakness, you either put everything into trying to protect it, or you just kind of leave them to the wolves. But meanwhile, wolves, uh, <laughs> wolves you say for kid? Well, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I got the sides mixed up there. That Cacao has yet to choose his champion, and it's going to be Mountain on the Elise. Let's see if they do. Steal away half of the secret weapon there, taking Kalista. <laughs> well, that's certainly no secret. Have, and that's a really strong bottom lane there as well, coming through for AHQ. So Thresh and Kalista already taken away. Kitty's signature Janna pick, and that'd make a lot of sense here. I do like it. Sort of adds to that Jugger Jinx flavor as well. And Zatai looking to pick up an Olaf, or it could be Kakao. Who so basically, everyone. yeah, I really do like this pickup uh, for Zatai getting that Olaf. I mean, technically, it could be a Kakao jungle Olaf, but. Um, We'll say that it's going to be a top lane here because that gives Tentative. two threats that you can support with Lulu and Janna. Lulu and Janna both work well, also enabling Olaf. So if your uh, yeah. Jinx does fail and Monte Cristo does not believe in Kid and he <laughs> <laughs> performs as, as he expects, a lot then of you still have an Olaf here, on the you know, it's, it's not all about, you know, Monty doing it, but it's okay. It's okay. HQ now about to round out their picks here, and we'll see what Arn and Albus are going to lock away for Westor and Mountain. Yeah, they're getting... This is available. They're getting ostensibly counter picks to both of the solo lanes right now, unless IG really wants to flex in that last round of the draft. But the jungle, a bit of a mystery, and will the Hecarim come out as predicted yeah. by Tabe? It would not be bad with this composition, for sure. Lee Sin also, I think, was another one of the weapons. All right, so they do go with the Darius into that Olaf, and surprise, surprise, Westdorf yep. Fizz comes through. <laughs> so once again, no wave clear here. They've got the Kalista with uh, no wave clear solo laners. Going to be hard if and HQ to get behind. Tabe was right, everyone. Tabe look, was right. HQ probably didn't have enough time to listen, so nothing given away. And Kakao looks like he's going to go back to sort of the old style as well, the Ignite and the Smite on the Hecker, and we'll see whether he switches that over or anything. Yeah, big thing here, though, is that Rookie is on the Lulu. So he's going to be trying to yeah. help out the rest of the team rather than taking it over himself. Uh, Lulu is no slouch in the early game. Can easily punish uh, Fizz, though. So can shove him under the turret, and we'll see what sort of CS deficit Westor gets himself into this game. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about this Invictus comp, though, considering the fact that Kakao did sort of farm up a whole lot on that Skana, let them fall behind a whole lot early. Is he going to be focusing too much here on the Hecarim, just trying to get himself huge? Well, I, I think IG probably wants to lane swap here and just fast push with Jinx Janna and avoid until Kakao can hit six and they can really start doing some damage. HQ basically has no wave clear on this composition, so they're going to have a very tough time, I think, surviving this early game, even with Kakao just farming the jungle. Yeah, it could be dangerous. And of course, self-sufficient lanes there as well in the fact that they do have the Undertow fantastic in a lane swap is the Olaf and you've got the Lulu there as well with a whole lot but as we get into game tweet at LOL Esports and tell us who you think has the edge with the hashtag AHQ win or IG and we'll see whether who's going to be right as we hop onto the rift I'm so excited for this particular matchup of course Westall against Rookie and Rookie on the Lulu now he can sort of make his way through this laning phase with the fact that you neutralize a whole lot with that Lulu pickup 
Well, with with IG's composition here, I have to say I'm very much favoring them. AHQ is going to have a tough time. Sure, they've got a dangerous skirmish, and they have the Darius and the Fizz, but I'm not sure they're ever really going to get a chance to do that, considering IG controls the lane so well. Yeah, the thing is, this AHQ comp doesn't really operate well from behind, because they have to get picks, and they have to control vision. Whereas IG, they can start taking those early turrets that you talked about, and once all the outer turrets are down, it's it becomes incredibly difficult for ID to I, or HQ to make one of those picks. It's going to have to be in their own territory if they do start losing ground. Yeah, do we think that AHQ is probably going to start with a bit of focus on that top lane, try and get Ziv ahead early with the early sort of pressure of an Elise? So while Ziv has been a really strong uh, player for them, they haven't actually focused his lane that much. Um, and they focused a lot on the bottom lane, trying to get money uh, down to On, so then On can start carrying. Ziv's an outstanding player, uh, but they haven't focused his lane. So maybe they'll switch it up here. You know, Elise, very versatile, can get that Darius snowballing. Yeah, On has also gotten so much of the gold. I mean, you and I were talking, Kobe, beforehand, and there's no other player except Imp that gets as much farm between 15 and 30 minutes is on. They give him all of the empty lane farm. And that's a concern here because the Callista against an Olaf and a Hecarim molting into the back line is going oh, to be yeah. highly vulnerable. Zatai did opt for the flash here, interestingly enough, but he does have the whimsy with the Lulu to make up for the lack of ghost. Yeah, and Kakao has gone with the ignite in the jungle. So this is a this is a Hecarim that is looking to duel you. Let's see if uh, he does grab a kill with that Ignite. Kakao, going to try and carry here. And by the looks of things, the lane swap is going to be answered. So a bit of upside down League of Legends going on. Well, the reason why that happened is actually uh, Ziv looked like he showed himself on the ward uh, just behind the red buff there. So they actually faked him out a little bit. And we did see the recall from IG. Pretty sure they wanted that lane swap. They wanted to get the 2v1, but not going to happen after some clever vision play from AHQ early. Yeah, and Alba's still hanging out there in the river, but Arnie's going to make it to lane, pick himself up some extra farm. Interesting little adaptation there by IG as well. As they started out with the double yeah, jungle, uh, yeah, Kakao actually going to let the small uh, golem monsters there go over to Zatai, and then he gets down to lane ASAP. Yeah, Albus also starting off with the Gromp experience himself, so getting to level two quite quickly, so they are very much committed to doing some damage in this lane, but fortunately on still a level one. Wave pushes in for the moment. Yeah, Kitten Kid is pushing up very, very quickly. Westor doing his best to farm out, but Rookie just being annoying on this Lulu, as you generally will. Kakao's going to start off his red buff, so the funny business so much early on. And how do you see this sort of bottom lane slash top lane slash whatever the heck's going on down there with Zatai versus Ziv going? I see it heavily influenced by the junglers here. I mean, mid lane's going to be constantly shoved in, so I don't see Mountain trying to make something happen uh, on the mid lane. Westlore is taking a bit of a beating, and uh, the bottom lane is is pretty much open season down there. Two melee champions uh, brawling constantly. Definitely does attract junglers, but looks like he's going up top here. Going to try and make a play on Kitty and Kid. Kakao going back and picking up the early Skirmisher Saber, which in the late game against what AHQ is running right here, they're going to have a hard time actually dealing damage to Hecker. I mean, this is very scary the later it goes. This is a risky dive here that Mountain is going for. It's oh, going to have to It's going to have to be some really well-played moves by AHQ if they actually want to pull this one off. All summoners are available, but there is no exhaust on Kitties, actually. He's gone for the Ignite with Janna looking for the kill. So that might make it easier. Too dangerous. They better land the skill shots if they want to come out ahead. Uh, they're going to go for it. We'll see if they actually show right here. At least some of that top side. No, just hovering around that tri brush and immediately backing out. Yeah, so it's actually getting a full stack of that passive from Zid there in the bottom lane as all of that was going on in the top side. Yeah, a three v so a three v two tower dive when everyone's level three is really hard to pull off. And Mountain uh, using up quite a bit of time there. Meanwhile, Kakao, since he saw Mountain on the top side of the map, obviously is going to go in look for some counter jungling and is going to make Mountain pay for his time spent up on the top side. And Kakao pulls ahead here in the jungle experience a little bit. Also gets some deep wards down before he leaves. Yeah, that's actually quite helpful for Invictus Gaming, just to have that additional bit of farm, and we'll see how well Mountain can respond to it. He's going to do a little bit of counter-jungling of his own, but Kakao should be there soon enough. 
And this is very risky for him to do. May get out of there in time. Of course, the wall's still being taken here by Kakao, but you're right. Ballsy maneuver there from Mountain. So Gonna both take the big one and go. top laners also use their teleports to get right back to lane, uh, trying to buy uh, small increases in power. Well, he only took the big one, so that's a lot of money left there. Kakao can clear it out fairly quickly. Again, returning to the top lane, though. This, I think, he's kind of waiting around for a counter gank, but he's on a ward. That is going to wear off here, but Kakao running forward Mountain. Looks like he didn't even see him there as he runs straight into the Cocoon. Kitties throws out the Zephyr Mountain. Oh, that was a fantastic Howling Gale. So about That's that gonna be first block. volatile jungle matchup there. Mountain <laughs> spends so much time up top. Returns and sits on a ward here. Easy move for Kakao. Not to mention, he just had Mas Machete, so this might upgrade doing work for Kakao, basically ensuring that he's going to win that duel. Not very much damage coming out of Mountain quite yet, and that's a very easy first blood. And there's almost nothing that he can gain by sitting in that brush. You know, On and Albus could keep track of when Kitties and Kid move over there and place their trinket wards, so... Maybe a lack of communication there. Uh, really, the only benefit he, Mountain could have gone would be if there was a counter gank. And even then, it would only be to stop the counter gank. So, I mean, stop the gank. So, yeah. Interesting. Well, Westor, he's going to head back to base, grabs himself the Fiendish Codex and hey, Doran's Ring. He's going to head back. Bit of a CS deficit there, but will catch a wave as it heads towards the turret. And Rookie is going to do the same. We'll see what he decides to pick up. Looking very good for IG here, though. That also gave Kakao an experience boost, getting that, uh, getting a share of that kill. So Hecarim going to scale pretty well here. Looks like he is going to go for the Cinder Hulk Hecarim as well. Oh, Mountain. Mountain. Yeah, what makes you think you can go in IG's jungle after dying like that? Well, he's going to die again. The other two comes through, and Zatai is going to lock that one down. Kakao standing out of range of the repel as well. It was so beautiful. There are, there are two things that you need to do before going into the enemy jungle. First of all, well, I guess he still has his flash. He didn't use it the, uh, the first time he died, but you have to have lane presence. You have to at least have your laners push up the lanes this early in the game. It's so dangerous to go into IG territory, yet Mountain goes on a solo mission there and they actually don't even call Zatai's move straight up the river, catching him out. Yeah, not only that, but he should know that Kakao recalled at the same time, and it takes longer for him to walk into the enemy jungle than it does for Kakao, who basically just went back immediately to walk into that same side of his own jungle, so you, you just can't play like that. This is why we've seen the rise of the teams with really good jungle and support duos. Because of the danger of getting this early vision, you need someone like the Thresh who's on your team who could lantern you out when you're trying to get that first round down, but he goes on the solo mission. Yeah, not to mention, if we just take a look at On, On dominating that lane in terms oh, of yeah. CS right now, they've kept it pushed up the entire time. Can be very easy for uh, AHQ just to send all this over into the top side. You need to control the top side, control the side of the map that you're winning right now. And that bottom lane vision really doesn't give you a whole lot. Now there's a lot of wards in the jungle there for IG. They will we'll know who's coming up. Pinkwood, unfortunately, not going to be spotting it there for AHQ, but Kitten Kitty's now trying to shove this one out, but you're exactly right. I mean, that CS lead still there as a, a huge wave heads towards the turret for Arn to eat up. And AHQ needed these early advantages. They had to get them because the later this game oh, goes... Land... Ah. Oh. I was looking for the combo there. Yeah. Throw the lantern, then take the second half of the hook, but they didn't have quite enough vision to be confident to go for it, I guess. So right now, as we take a look at IG, they've got everything they want. They got the first blood onto Jinx. Well, that's going to normalize the AD carry matchup just yep. a little bit. They've got the Olaf ahead, so now on in a whole heap of trouble. And Rookie's just been taking care of himself versus Westor in this mid lane. And this is uh, quickly spiraling out of control. You can take a look at it and you say, okay, 1K gold deficit. But with these two team compositions, this is pretty disastrous. Exactly. I mean, not only has Mountain, you know, kind of set back the two important lanes there for his team, but Kakao is going to outscale him as well. Already completed the Cinder Hulk, and they're easily taking Dragon without having to give up presence in any of the lanes right now. Yeah, this is sort of the standard IG move as well. You just move the lane swap down towards the bottom side, get all of that control. Hook was optimistic there from Albus, but Re the Dragon, sorry, is going to be secured here by Kakao. I'm really surprised by HQ. Uh, the game that we saw them lose versus Cloud9, they played again 
with the Fizz and the Darius and the very low amount of wave clear with a pick-oriented jungler in Rengar. Now they have a lease, but it's effectively the same strategy. And they failed to snowball the solo lanes. And it's just happening again. It was very ineffective in the first outing of a similar composition, and they're just running it again. The they thing that I'm worried about here is the fact that AHQ, I mean, they banned three of R Rookie's champions, and then he hops on arguably his most successful in the Lulu. Those bans literally meant nothing. Many questions. Happen. Many questions, Monte Cristo, most definitely. But bottom lane is going to normalize, so we do actually have a bot lane now, which is handy. 2v2, Kid and Kitty's playing very far back. Pierce not going to find them, though. 97 to 82 in that farm. See, they're taking a lot of damage there from Zatai, but the Apprehend comes in. That's going to be a lot of damage to Zatai. He wants it. The ult comes down, but it's not enough. Oh, flashes forward. He's the passive going to know what it is. And Ziv grabs a solo kill. Once again, even though AHQ don't give much to Ziv, they even, they even actually have bet a kill to his lane opponent, and he still <laughs> comes up with an outplay. Well, he's a shining light for HQ right now. He is their hopes. Their hopes and dreams rest on his shoulders. It's a pretty dark night, though, Kobe, at the moment. It's Kid and Kitties. They are going to clear out a ward. Fantastic stuff. Vision control definitely in their favor here on the bottom side. And they're moving their vision around the map as well, which is what I like. So two pink wards there on the top side for AHQ. But IG not taking care of that area anymore. For IG, though, they got the first dragon. Okay, Zatai made a little boo-boo in the top side. But <laughs> <laughs> they got the first dragon. That was another key aspect for HQ to look to snowball off that objective that. to win early on in this game. But now IG, with that one and their ability to control the dragon in the late game, should be feeling very confident. HQ needs more big outplays like that to yeah. really turn the tides. Zatai, I think, you know, if you're going to go in all in on Darius like that, the Juggernaut battles, you have to fully commit uh, yeah. and try and get inside the Q range there. If he had fully committed and just stayed in there and went yeah, melee, the passive. kept auto attacking, you know, not getting hit with the edge of the Q, that's really your only hope. Because after you're, after you're that deep in a one-on-one -on -one brawl, you know, flash for flash, of course he's going to follow you and complete the dunk. Also, just because of Olaf's passive, you're more dangerous the lower you get. So. If you kind of do want to go all in when you have those opportunities. It was a close duel until he's decided to run away. Down bottom, though. Yeah, a lot of trouble here. Super made that target. Not quite enough. The Ignite's ticking. One more ticky flashes just for fun. Just to show that he is going to survive. Pierces his way away. And man, that was close. Yeah, Kakao's looking to use his Hecarim ultimate as well. He was just heading down the lane. Right now, though, since they forced him out, this is probably going to be that first turret. We'll see that chain of turrets now. IG going to try and burn this one down, then rotate the Jinx plus Janna combo. And there's just no wave clear in the mid lane, so they've got a lot of choices about where they want to go right now. Can they control this Darius? Mountain on the top side, but he's been seen with a pink ward in the tri brush, it appears, so that's just going to be Zatai immediately backing off, not even going to risk the dive. Just going to wait for the bottom lane to move up towards that top side, you'd assume. Assume, grab that outer turret. Classic Jinx maneuver. I mean, she kills turrets pretty quick. May as well utilize it. All right, so they're actually, yep, just going to switch him up into top lane right now. A little bit dangerous considering the invasion that's going on in the top side jungle, but trying to save this turret. Looks like they will be successful to that end if Kitties wants to shield it. <laughs> Negative, and they might get dove here. So HQ, this is a big play for them. Can they pull off the pick? Whole box comes down. Kitty's in a whole bunch of trouble. The hook lands on the kid. Rookie teleporting into ties here as well. Kitty's though, he's going to get destroyed. Ziv with the passive running from the ultimate. No re-engage to come in for IG. Oh, unless Kakao uh, wants it. Nope. No. Decides better of it. Westor oh. is in the back line for some reason. Gets that smite down on him. He's just going to playfully trickster away, but... Interesting. IG losing one, though. Nice catch out there for AHQ. All right, they also were able to get the turret on top of it. And, oh, oh Mount just no. barely misses his cocoon. Flash out of the way that. to their sentence as well. Oh. If that cocoon hits, then they can try and snowball, probably get mid turret off of that kill as well. One of the really big factors in the last game between these two teams was that vision control. Uh, both teams a little bit lackluster. IG actually managed to get a 23-minute Baron just because we did see An on the opposite side of the map. They took advantage of that opportunity. 
But then IG, when they went for the second Baron, they didn't properly ward around the backside of the pit. They were playing on blue side, and that allowed Mountain to get a steal. And again, they're playing very disrespectfully towards Vision. They know that AHQ was just in that topside jungle. They walk through a whole host of wards, and they find HQ quite obviously there, commit too much to saving that tower, and don't back off in time. Yep, giving HQ a little bit of a window to get back in here. And good job by HQ jumping on the opportunity. Pretty big swing there to get that turret gold, uh, as well as some map pressure on the top side. Now they've got a bunch of wards to continue to allow Ziv to try and push. The kill did go over to him again, so Ziv, definitely a lot of... A lot of pressure on his shoulders to carry right now. He has hit level 11 for Darius for the extra level in his ultimate as well. Can still pull out those pentadunks in the, the team fight. Uh, also, two TPs up for AHQ. None for Invictus Gaming right now, so pressure is just going to keep mounting in that top side for Darius. Also, I have to say, a Westor. The CS deficit, perfectly acceptable in Fizz versus Lulu matchup. Oh, yeah. Here. He actually did not get punished uh, too heavily. Crucially, did not lose his tower. Yeah, that is the big deal. Of course, one thing I really like as well out of the HQ comp is that if they do manage to get a pick, and they've got a lot of abilities to do that with the Cocoon and the Death Sentence, you get Ziv that passive rolling on the ultimate, they can roll over the rest of the fight if it does ensue, and it's a lot of the reason why IG decided not to re-engage that situation. We'll see whether they can utilize that as the game moves forward. This bottom lane has to play so safe for IG. They don't have any backup right now. No teleports available for them. And Kakao is slowly making his way over to try and provide some support. HQ needs to get this dragon. You can see them pushing the way forward right now, threatening that dive, but they can't just wait here until the TPs come back up, and they are ticking ever closer. They need to actually commit to this. Looks like they are going to be pulling it out now. Yeah, Westor had managed to push that wave up there as well as Rookie staying very far back. Dragon looks to be falling here on. Just gonna rend it. Pull the spears out. No, not even gonna do it. Doesn't want to waste the mana. And now he can just smite it away. Nobody likes rending objectives in this matchup. It's yeah, apparently not. IG, nope. <laughs> HQ, nope. <laughs> well, look at this. Quick map so movement up towards mid lane after the Dragon. Can they finish it off? IG gonna try and defend here, but they leave top open for Ziv now. Ziv also has defensive wards there from that earlier play, so he can just back right off. Yeah, and despite some decisive early moves here from IG, it looks like they're playing scared at this stage of the game. They lost so much tempo with yeah. that play up top. So they had a lot of momentum in the game, but the duo going up top getting cornered and then the kill for HQ on the tower as well, just what they needed. Now that said, IG, Going even in gold at 20 minutes, definitely not the worst thing for them. <laughs> True. At all, considering their composition and that they opted into this unfavorable matchup in their duo lane, and they've built really a round kid in this, and they've got the Hecarim just keeping on farming and working his way towards the Trinity yeah. Force here. Oh, yeah. Kakao with the jungle Hecarim. He's, do he's doing force. a dandy right now because dandy moved to the top lane. Kakao's like, oh, I'm a bit jealous of the fact that, you know, my now in China Korean brethren get to do that. He's just building top lane Hecarim in the jungle. I mean, he's got Ignite. He's looking for the carry. There's Damn so right. much burn damage on the challenging smite plus the Ignite. He's, he's bitter that he was 16th in damage share among <laughs> the players. <laughs> Make it up for it in one game. One he's going to tip the scales. Everyone always talks about the kid 443 game, but Kakao had an 880-something damage game here. You didn't just mention the 443 Vayne <laughs> game. There's an interesting statistic. He's 9-1 and one on Vayne, his kid. He just needs to do over 500 damage and he can win. Well, no vein this game, so. No, not happening. Thought it might come out again. <laughs> One can hope. You know, there's still a couple more games today. See, that's the key to vein. You you get just the damage from Silver <laughs> need, Bolt, so you, know, you don't actually need items or to win lane at all. Well, look you at this. You need four digits in the damage, Blank Monty. Here. That's what you need, at least four digits. They need to place a teleport to get that teleport, or a ward to get the teleport yeah, in back. down on Achilles, though. Takes about half of his health there as Mountain comes in. The Chum, the Waters is down, but the Monsoon's there. Ahn picks up the first kill as there's the Onslaught of Shadows. Not doing too much from Kakao, as he's going to have to get out, but can't. There's no Zip. flash there. That flash from Zip oh, right missed. in, but the Apprehend's not going to find it and IG can disengage. All right, they're going to be able to take the turret after it, though. No 
flank wards at all coming in for Invictus Gaming as they push up on that turret, and they are very brutally punished. Mountain just sneaks in the side and gets a cocoon. And a kind of delayed reaction there from Kitty. He dies, this flash still up, tried to burn that monsoon instead. Look at the wards. I, I just don't have any on the map here. So there's Mountain. Let's see who drops the ward. I think he's going to put it down for him. Yeah, Mountain actually places the ward for the teleport to come in. Kitty just gets exploded here. What is this pink ward doing in the middle of the lane right now is my major question, but taking a look at the rest of this fight, I mean, On gets out very easily. Kakao gets into the front line, but he's got no support at that point in time. So HQ roaring right back in this one, surprisingly. Yeah, completely. Almost 2,000 gold now, the lead for this team. Hops on top of the land there as well, does On. Kid and Kitties make their way back towards the bottom side. Kid throwing down another pink ward. You can't afford to play this lazy against AHQ. AHQ are a team that will continually look to make big plays like this, look for those team fights, and look to punish you for not warding up even your own jungle here. It's already cost IG multiple kills and two outer turrets. And a whole ton of vision deep in their own jungle. I love what we see right now. You can see these wards on either side of the mid lane. That's great for setting up picks in case Rookie or somebody wanders towards the mid lane trying to defend. So great blanket vision, AHQ, making the most of these opportunities. And yeah. now also able to play around Ziv as well. That carry in the top lane, 2-0 and 2 now on the Darius, has a decent CS lead on about 20 as Westall. He's trying to find his way in. Albus lines up the hook, but can't find it on the kid. Yeah, Ziv going DPS here. Steric's gauge for the second item. He is going to be a monster for that next team fight, even if IG try and take him down from the front line. You know, Kid, he can't really afford to ignore the front line, so he's going to dump damage into him. And it's just going to make Ziv do more. Well, Kakao is about 700 gold away from that Trinity Force, getting that power spike at about 22 minutes. And uh, Mountain, he's going a bit of DPS too here with the Haunting guys. And the Rune Glaive. So this is pure pick. AHQ gets into a team fight, and this Elise is just going to explode. But. In the meantime, the burst damage is very high. Exactly, and they've had success to the, with all the with these flanks here for AHQ. So continue to build that way. You know, IG aren't aren't getting defensive vision up, so might as well. If you catch someone, now he's going to be able to blow them up. And uh -oh. this is the vision edge, kitties. Oh, oh my Jen, goodness! Jen is a tricky mistress there. <laughs> very speedy. <laughs> nice try, nice try. But that's what they've got to do. A couple pink wards on the Baron right now. They're trying to bait that. As we speak, a little bit tough with the Fizz still showing in the bottom side, but does have the TP in case they want to make a play onto that objective. And IG just holed up in their own base right now, trying to reclaim a bit of their own jungle. Yep, surprise, surprise as well. Westall there towards the bottom side. Recalling now, but was split pushing away. Rookie we're going to pick up that wave as it heads towards the turret, but it's a very interesting Baron call, but there's no vision available for IG. Teleports are up, but Kitties, can he get the ward over there in time? Mountain very low. As you mentioned, relatively um, low tankiness in the build. Plus, it's extremely early up. in the game. So doing Baron is very costly this early because you're going to sustain a whole bunch of damage. They did have complete vision coverage with the True Sight uh, and seeing Rookie down bottom, but going to be chased off there. I mean, why not try it, though? At that yeah, point in time, you, you have the Callista for the secure. I think you at least make an effort on that. Ziv was about to come in and finish off the tanking. And you don't really lose anything. Because they have the waves pushed up in the mid and the top side, they didn't lose any vision control. It's just Mountain going back and healing back up again. We've seen Callista Rens fail in this matchup, but <laughs> it was on the other Twice. foot. It was He's on the other foot. He's never going to live that down. So, Dragon, that should be secured a little bit easier. Let's see here. Kakao wants to contest, though. Oh, Westo is going to use the playful tricks to get out of the way of the horse. Spear's still in it, but they are going to run out. IG pick up the aggro. Both top laners do have teleport. Yeah, Olaf actually running towards this one now as well. Dragon's going to reset. IG looking to hold up position. HQ are here as well. Darius making his way in. It is going to be a 5v5. We'll see whether IG have leveled up enough in order to make this one work. Their comp should be pretty good at this. Yeah, and the they, Trinity Force is completed. Yeah, big finish on the item there for Kakao. As far as the top laners, though, Ziv has a full Giant's Belt over Zatai right now. And HQ just 
They've Switching it up, and they're going to siege the tier two. They don't have a great composition for this, so they've got to take any angles they can. A lot of melee champions. I mean, so they did a great job run? zoning them with that dragon presence, and they get the turret. Yeah, Rookie looking to try and get something done. The Q doesn't land there from Ziv, who takes the land, but Kakao, he's got a decent flank, decides to head straight into the middle of the team. Lots of damage, but Rappel's going to save him. Westor takes down Kakao. Mountain's very low. Albus as well. There are so many low members on this AHQ lineup. Westor burning to death. The Zap, not going to find him. Kid rockets forward, gets excited. Kitty's with the monsoon, gets on out of there. Baron's going to finish him off. Ziv is massive in this fight as Mountain somehow still alive. Not entirely sure how that one worked. Cocoon lands Rookie. Four for three. What a disjointed team fight right there. And AHQ, Ziv, we talked him up. He comes out on top. Constant healing from spamming the Q as well. How did Mountain survive? And takes a red buff as well. Okay. So we'll, we'll wait for the replay, but it was kind of a disjointed engage there. Uh, Kakao took a lot of damage before the DPS was able to come in. I, I just don't know what... Kitty was, was doing for most of these fights. But anyway, Kakao coming in <laughs> this here. This is Kakao and Zatai versus the team, basically. R Ricky has to flash in there. Kid has to flash in there just to get in range of the fight. That's two flashes on the backline carries here from IG just to get in range of the fight. Now you just see the retreat right there. Westor just barely making it out until oh. Kid gets a reset on the other side. Oh, what a cocoon up, on the Kid right there. Well, he walked into a blind brush. He couldn't actually see anyone in there when he wrapped around. And then Rookie gets tied up by the cocoon. And there's a lot of execute damage the on the, uh, the Rune Glaive Elise. He did, uh, he did use Wild Growth onto Kakao at the beginning of that fight, I believe. No, it was up. Oh, interesting. He was never in range. And he tried to get in range of Zatai as well, but he wasn't quite there. It was just a little bit unfortunate. And then cocooned and killed. We are getting a slight replay of that particular situation right there. And IG, even on Dragons now, have started up the second one for themselves. Looks like they're going to give the Dragon for the secondary turret. They have Ziv split pushing right now, and he's going to be able to take that one down. Yep, Kakao eats himself some fish, but he will be fine. Ziv just going to trade this one. All right. So, uh, yes, they did use Wild Growth on Kakao. Did they really? They okay. actually, yeah, they did on Kakao at the beginning of that fight. It was came in with the Hecarim engage. That was what the flash was for from Rookie to get in range. Yeah. A bit of confirmation there. And we have HQ again, setting up in the exact same brush for this pick, but IG still not falling for it. They do have their, uh oh, oh. Kid gets caught. Yeah, caught out, there's the cocoon and the death sentence. That's gonna secure it as Kakao makes his way in. The ultimate goes down, but another Repel Mountain just gets himself out of there. Super Mega Death Rocket not gonna find it. And there's the Fates Call. Some extra damage onto the Baron there for AHQ, but they lose no one for the pick. Yeah, yet another pick here. AHQ constantly controlling the vision on IG's red quadrant of the jungle. You don't want to be doing the Baron at the same time, however, that you make <laughs> that pick. So they took a lot of unnecessary damage onto Ziv by trying to tank that objective while simultaneously having the support and the jungler on the outside of the pit. But once again, they're able to just back off after they get the pick. No harm, no foul for AHQ, and they get another bit of money for the pockets. Yeah, 6,000 gold is the lead here as well now for AHQ. They are streaming ahead. Three, zero, and five. Spare and pink boards have been ridiculously efficient. Yeah. Uh, there has been really no attempt from IG to get into that side of the river at all and try and overtake some control. So they... Uh, Having a really tough time right now. They get some green wards in, but those pink wards have been invaluable for AHQ. That's a dead man's plate as well. It's off as if he's going to be huge heading into these next fights. But you oh, can see he AHQ. already is. Well, that is a very good point. I like how he's trying out all the new items as well. Strokes gauge, dead man's plate. These are the most effective ones for Darius, especially if you are ahead and looking to continue the snowball. Okay. Speaking of items as well, An, he's well and truly happy with what he has. The Blade of the Rune King, Hurricane, as well as that last Whisper and the QSS. Mountain lands another Cocoon. Much more impressive on the Elise than the Ringo. Well, except for the first five minutes of the game, where, uh, you know, he tried yeah, his wasn't so he, tried, he tried his best to... Uh, that was to throw us all off, right? Exactly. It was. False sense of it security. Worked. HQ, he has to give them a mountain to climb every game. You see, oh, that's just living yeah. up to his name right Liked there. Liked it. Liked it a lot. Well, IG able to at least clear some wards out in their jungle. 
Can't quite get to that Baron pit just yet. Oh, I, I'm sad. Uh, I'm sad he's actually going for the Randuits. I was hoping for the Rylies for the full yep. <laughs> AP Elise build. Go big or go home. But I think realistically, much better for him to have a Randuids in this particular matchup. Yeah, probably a good point. Since dying twice in the early game as well, three, zero, and five. Yeah, he's definitely picked it up. Oh yeah. Alvis and Mountain now continue to clear out some vision. So IG managed to get one ward in the pit. It's gone. And HQ actually switching up here, uh, trying to rely on the power in Ziv and his split push to create the pressure. Here comes the teleport, though. They've been able to draw out that important cooldown. Now they can just back off Baron and take the turret. They don't have to restart this Baron. They should actually just uh, back away from it. They can get a lot of free damage on that top turret, but the engage from IG. Yeah, there's the Flash Zephyr, but Lantern's just going to get him out of there. Flash Zephyr engage. He was already in range. There is nothing you can do with a Flash Zephyr engage against a Callista Thresh lane. Well, they got the turret here for HQ. Yeah, you can lose a turret is apparently um, what you can do. Well, that is it was sort of an IG panic right there. You're like, oh, no, we used our teleport cooldown. We have to force in this engage or else we're going to lose that top turret for nothing there. Yeah. Well, more vision going to be cleared as they just start off the Baron one more time. There have been a lot of Baron starts this game. We'll see whether AHQ can actually secure it this time around. No vision is going to be put down. Kakao still waiting here. I think he understands that they could possibly be down. Teleport coming in, though. That is going to be Rookie making his way over the top. Westall's going to find him straight away. Just immediately oh. eaten by the fish. Baron secured as well. And AHQ streaming ahead in this game. It's 9,000 gold now the lead. And a Baron buff circling around this side. And this is the AHQ we were expecting. Sort of the dark horse heading into the competition. That was brutal. Yet yeah, they don't care about wave clear. They're just going to make picks to come back into the game. It's a risky strategy, but they were able to perform. Well, they, they did control the Baron Vision for a very, very long time quite well, so they were able to make that comeback and actually secure the objective, take the inhibitor. But, I mean, IG has been all over the place, too. You, he saw Fizz standing on his ward. I don't know what he thought was going to happen when he TP'd in there, but Darius and Fizz Right there when you TP in, the odds of surviving that are almost zero. That's a cancel. Yeah. Well, yeah. well we'd hope it was a cancel, Kobe. We'd hope. <laughs> Wasn't this time around. Rookie, though, probably learned the lesson pretty quickly. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, watch Ziv in action some more here. Yeah, the reason I say like these are the best items for Darius when he's ahead is because you stack up so much speed with the, with the dead man's plate. You can get there for the engage, and once you're in range, your Black Cleaver speed takes over. Yes, you use up your Dead Man's proc, and then you have the constant bleeding to renew speed for him, and you have the backup damage from Steric, so he's a complete monster. Meanwhile, Westor finds a solo kill. Yep, Kakao is going to fall down. Westor grabs himself the dragon there at the same time as AHQ secure that on the other side of the map, and this is all going wrong for IG. Well, I mean, there's just no MR yet on the Kakao, and proving to be quite problematic as long as Westor is able to keep split pushing. And with that TP, of course, he'll have every opportunity to do that. And now we're just going to see him push forward onto the bottom side. He's taking a lot of damage there as well as Mountain gets caught by the Chompers. Super Mega Death Rocket comes in. That was optimistic. Satai now going to undertow a huge Siege minion, but AHQ is going to keep sieging the 1-4. Westor is there on the top side. Ziv just wandering his way through. This tower is going for. I like the idea of a super mega optimism rocket. Yeah, well, that's what it was. All these rune glaives with all these. Of course, uh, Lich Bane in the top side. They're going to make short work of this, these objectives in a split push. And here we go. Yep, Kitty's going to get apprehended and destroyed. Arn picks up the kill. Rookie going to get eaten by the fishes. Westor uses the Zonyas right on top of the Nexus. Even takes a land to safety there as AHQ there on the fountain. The Nexus is exposed to tie all the way in the back of his fountain, but still not safe. As somehow Mountain was tanking that for far too long. But the Nexus falls. AHQ even out the matchup here. And IG look all over the place. Uh, they do indeed, but my dream of each team that won last week beating the, their opponent oh, again yeah. for the four-way 3-3 tie is still alive. So I'm pumped. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we'll see if it can continue as the day goes out. I just would prefer if you didn't talk to IG beforehand <laughs> because it uh, looked like they were having a good time in the early game, but just didn't work out as the game went on. Yeah, somebody check in on spawn for us, please. Because oh, who did he I predict? IG who fans predict? are definitely oh, not happy goodness. right now. They it wasn't had... on the desk this time, but I have a feeling he may have tweeted something out. I don't know. They had a decent amount of control there with a good yeah. early start, picking off the jungler two times. Uh, but AHQ comes up big with the picks. Yeah, massive. And of course, Mountain playing fantastically after the first 10 minutes there on the Elise, getting all the picks that they needed. And Ziv just got way too big. Huge congratulations to this team. And Wessel there with the solo kill onto Kakao at the end, sort of icing on the cake. Fizz is just pretty good. Well, the three mid lane bands, I mean, we can talk about how Rookie is a great Lulu player, but at this tournament, he has been so much of his team's damage that taking really away point. some of his big carries actually proved very efficient because no one else in that game really stepped up to fill that void. Yeah, and Kid just still having a pretty horrible experience here at Worlds. I mean, the first week wasn't exactly Kid's week. Had a decent game against HQ last time around, but other than that, nothing really going their way. And this bottom lane for IG, bit of a liability. I'm curious as to what went on with the shot calling there in the early game for them as well, because it might not be Kid and Kitty's fault. Maybe they were told to move up to that top side. Well, it is generally what they do in the LPL as well. So that's sort of what they're used to. It seemed like they were just in their stride saying, OK, well, we know what to do next. But these lane swaps have not been working out for these LPL teams because they're done so differently. Uh, they haven't actually picked up on it or yeah. uh, ad adapted appropriately. And one thing coming into this after watching that first game between these two teams was vision. Who was actually going to step up to the plate and get the wards down? And that was unequivocally HQ <laughs> yes. in this game. They did a great job yeah. controlling the wards around the Baron and the upper side of the river, and that helped them quite a bit in winning this game. Yeah, those three pink Baron wards definitely lasted a long time. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's send it back to the desk to break down.